Happy New Year, and welcome to the Hiking Through Podcast. I'm Erin Egan, and this is the podcast where I get to pull up a seat at the campfire and have a conversation about all things through hiking, the triumphs and challenges, and oh, those lessons learned. And today's guest is Mischief, known off trail as Chris Phillips. In November of 2018, he slipped on some ice and fell getting water while hiking the AT. He woke up with severe frostbite. It's been quite the journey to find his way back to the trails that he loves. In this episode, we talk about 2018 and the repercussions from that one moment. Finding peace with his new normal, not letting the dream die, and Dragon Tooth Mountain. You can find this episode and all previous episodes at hiking-through.com. You can also find us on Apple Podcast and all the other podcast places. Enjoy my conversation with Mischief. Hey, Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you because you're, well, you're, you're an inspiration, honestly. Um, I know that I was going through your, your Instagram and mm. you, it feels like this moment in your life, this, this change, and it's not even a change, this, this thing that happened to you changed your perspective about a lot of things and left you with, I, I don't know. It's almost like you have like a direct connection to inspiration, inspirational. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I'm a completely different person than what I was. And it just gave me a completely different outlook and how I just do everything I can to just inspire as many people as uh, possible. And because if I'm out on the trail doing what I'm doing, even with somewhat limitations, and it, they're doing it if they had the heart and the mindset to make it happen. Yeah, I, I saw that looking at your walk, your hike on the AT this year. Yeah, when I started out, like it hadn't even been a year since my surgery. And I was only going like between one and four miles a day for a long time until the COVID thing happened. Mm-hmm. And then I got off trail and then got back in July. And that whole time I was off trail, I just kept pushing myself and pushing myself to get a mileage up. And now, now I can go between eight and 12, 13 miles. That's, that's incredible. I- <laughs> I, I mean, I, I know it was a scary moment out there, um, but I was also kind of uh, laughing that you you walked your prosthetic, not yeah. off necessarily, but like this is like yeah, like state my of first, the art. <laughs> <laughs> my, the funny thing is, whenever I went got back to the prosthetic place, they said it probably broke because it was on the uneven ground. I was like, well, that's what I told you I was going to be doing. <laughs> but yeah, um, my first, my one on my left foot, it broke like from Springer to Fontana. I was going up that and it broke going up it. And I went from that Mountain in the Smokies all the way to Irwin with only one prospect. And then halfway through the Shenandoah, my right one broke. So out of, out of 1,067 miles this year, around 780, I did it with prosthetics that wasn't functioning right. Like it, my prosthetics is it's a bar that goes under, and that's what gets me in my push off. Mm-hmm. So it was broke, so I was like flat footed walking, and I was just determined. They told me I could come in and get it fixed or get new ones, but it would take six weeks to do so. That would finish my height. So I just was like, I'll go do what I can and 
just too bad. And I ended up making it all the way to the Mason Dixon line. On essentially two broken prosthetics. Pretty much. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> the only time I had pro- full prosthetics that actually worked was from when I started in February in Parisburg to the scale, and then from Irwin to the scale in the Grayson House. So from Springer to Irwin, Harrisburg to the PA border, I had one or no prosthetics working right. And and so you had to walk flat footed kind of sort of like the, I used, the trekking poles helped me a lot. But going downhill and level I'd be fine, but uphill I was kinda having to step up and then pull up, step up and pull up. That's and if my right if my left foot would have been as short as my right one, mm-hmm. I would have probably had to get off trail. But my right one, I, my left one, I just had the toes missing. Mm-hmm. So I still have most of the foot. So I was able to push myself up with it and then carry my right foot up over. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, when you determine to do something, you're going to keep doing it. Yeah. Like I did. I didn't work my butt off all 2019 just to go home because something broke. Yeah. Mentally, I was there. Physically, I was there. I was not going home because something broke on my feet. That just, that reason just was not good enough. Where there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's and just I'm hoping amazing. And I'm hoping these ones I just got a couple of days ago can hold up to my plans next year. I don't know if We're, you've seen that or not, but uh-uh. um, next year I'm planning to do the, I'm doing the Foothills Trail here in a couple, like a couple weeks, sometime between January and February, January and March, I mean. April 1st, I'm getting back on the AT there at uh, the PA border, going to Maine. And if I finished sometime in August, I'm going back down to the wrong trail, finish it. And then my plan is to do the Shelter and Trace October and November. <laughs> I'm up to where I can do 10 miles a day during this time of year. During the summer, I, would, I shouldn't have no problem doing it's about 16, 80 miles altogether. Okay. And I did. 1,600 at 1,067 this year when for two months of that time, I was only going three or four miles a day. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing that you have going for you, which astounds me, is you have a very long hiking season because you're not afraid of the winter, so to speak. And people would think, since what happened to me, I would be scared to death to be out there now. Yeah. That's, my, that's actually my favorite time to be out. And I love the snow. I love the cold weather. And there's no bugs. You get all the views. And plus, if there's enough snow, it covers up all the roots and rocks. And I can just step over top of all of it. <laughs> <laughs> you can just kind of glide on through. Exactly. <laughs> so... We should probably bring people up to speed with that sort of hook in there on what happened to you, why you're using the the prosthetic, essentially, I, feet. To, I'll give you the shorter version because I'll be here all day. And Perfect. if anybody wants to hear the full version, you can like the video that tells the whole story. But basically, I was talking to Appalachian Trail and November well, November 27, 2018, a huge st- snowstorm come through, dumped about eight, nine inches of snow with layer of ice under it. I stopped at Chestnut Knob Shelter in Virginia. Got super, super cold, like way down into the team. Next morning, I was out of food. So I was going to go from there to Atkins for Mary to the hotel and Greek spot. Well, every stream I crossed, no, it was no water flowing. So when I got to Not, Not Mall Branch Shelter, it's November 28th. 
I went down, took my pack off, sit it down, went down to get water, and there was water there, but it was frozen over. So I took my trekking pole and a rock and just broke up the ice, went down with my bottle, fill it up. When I stood back up, I slipped on the ice, fell back and hit the back of my head, and it knocked me out. And then from just about five inches below my knee, down on both feet, legs was in the water. That happened about 9.30 in the morning. I didn't wake up until almost 4 o'clock that evening. And when I stood up, woke up, I had a killer, killer headache. Like the world was spinning. I lost a bunch of blood. And uh, when I stand up, I couldn't walk. I just fell right back down. And I remember there was snow and ice everywhere. So I crawled back up the hill. The creek is about 100 yards down the side trail and then 50 yards down the hill. So I crawled up that and crawled back up to the shelter. And you know how a lot of the shelters, especially through Virginia, they're raised up off the ground and you have a big gap. Mm -hmm. so I pushed myself up there and I fell asleep again. Well, past out. I had my fleece, my puppy, and all that on. I was soaking wet from the stair down. And I didn't wake up until the next morning. That's incredible. <laughs> it's it's amazing yeah. that you're alive after that yeah. much cold. Yeah. And Basically, I tried to get out on my own. And I got maybe 100 yards. The sun defrosted my feet, the worst pain i ever been in my life. And then I just crawled back to the shelter and I would, nobody called up with me until December 1st. Right. And then you had a couple of hikers come by. Yep. Hunter and Rocket. They threw hikes so in 2018. And they left you what food they could and then basically went into town yeah, she they wanted help. to go. They wanted to go that night they got there, but it was late, and I told them not to go tonight. Go in the morning, mm -hmm. and that's what they did. And they were they able to get medical attention. Yeah, the, the rescue people showed up about six o'clock that next day. Okay. In the evening. The crazy thing is, that was only two miles from the road, <sighs> but I. It, it was so rugged through there. I just, once my feet thawed out, I couldn't move. <laughs> so it like would have been moving. better for you if your feet hadn't have thawed out? Yep. Frostbite don't hurt until it hurts, but not excruciating. The pain comes from whenever it thawed. And my problem was it thawed out. And then it refroze. Oh, Jesus. That night. But so then, would you have, if your feet hadn't have thawed, would you have been able to get those two I, miles? I don't know. <laughs> I would have damn sure tried. Yeah. I tried like heck then, but it just every single step I took, I was just, like laying there crying. Like it's the worst pain I'd ever been in in my life. And I ended up with what they call deep frostbite. It goes all the way to the bone. Yeah. But that, but it was only, the deep frostbite was only on your feet, correct? Yeah. I had okay. like the uh, deep frostbite on my feet and then I had like just like first degree frostbite, just barely turns color up my leg. That okay. went away, but my feet, there was no saving. And then my right foot ended up getting gangrene in the healing process. And that's why I only have like that much of my foot. On your right foot? My right foot. Got it. I have like a centimeter and a half or about an inch past my ankle. Okay. But but when the doctors told you that 
that they were going to have to amputate. Uh, hell, the first thing they told me as soon as they cut my shoes off, they said I was going to lose my feet. And telling the hikers that, that's like the worst feeling. Or, I don't know, that's like telling the cancer patient they only got six months to live and walk out. Yeah. That's exactly what they did to me. And they sent me to five different hospitals, and every single one of them told me that over and over and over. Until I got to Wake Forest, and then they told me I was just going to lose part of my feet, which wasn't no bad. <laughs> when did it? When did it change from I'm losing my feet, and I'm never going, never going to hike again to if there's a, if I have the will, there is a way. Uh, July 2019. I stopped feeling sorry for myself. Like, I got in a real, real, real bad place. Like, when that happened, I lost my fiance, I lost my house, I lost my car, I lost my feet. Mm-hmm. I, don't know, I was, like a lot of people, or that has something dramatic to them, I was just ready to completely give up. And I don't know what switched it. I just woke up one morning and said, I'm not going to. So that day, I called the uh, uh, physical therapy place and said, I'm going back and doing it. And the day I went back, I had my backpack filled up with 15 pounds. <laughs> On my back, they was looking at me like I was crazy. But I was like, I want my body to learn to adapt and use muscles that I normally don't to compensate for that because I'm doing this. They thought I was crazy, but they said it's a perfect idea. <laughs> so, so for two months, every, three times a week, I was in there doing everything most people would be doing, just trying to learn to walk. But with a backpack on my back. Like my very first step standing up, I had a pack on. You and are a through hiker. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How long was it from July to you taking some steps on the trail again? Um, like there was a rail of the trail down the road from my house. I started going on it, but it's like level, no rocks, no nothing. Started going on it on October, in October. Wow, okay. Just going as far as I could, which wasn't very far. 100 yards one day, 200 yards next week, and so on and so on, until I got to where I could go about four or five miles. And then I decided, well, my buddy Smack, he actually... I uh, lived right down the road from me. He brought up the idea, let's go up Dragon Two on Christmas Day, 2019. And I've done that mountain a million times. I knew if I could get up and down it, I could get back on the trail. And uh, even in that video I made that day, as soon as I got up the Boy Scout trail and got the lost six spectacles back, I said right through the camera, all these doctors said I wouldn't be here. Look around. <laughs> <laughs> Celebration! <laughs> and I made it up it. No problem at all. We got from 311 to the very top of Dragon Creek in an hour and a half. Wow. For me, that's pretty crazy. Going down was a different story. Oh. It took, it took me five hours to get back down to, the, to go two miles. What what was that or why? I didn't know how to how I I it took me a long time to learn how to go downhill without my feet like just rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and rubbing so long. And now I actually take the end of my feet up. I didn't know to do that then. Like it just my feet wasn't ready for what I was doing, basically. But that that was uh, December 25th, January the 10th. 
I decided I wanted to try to do a little searching. I went down to Parisburg and did that climb going out of Parisburg, which is crazy, going Sobo. But I went from there to Sugar Run Road. It was like 15 miles, and I did it in three and a half days. And, and I just kept doing little sections like that until I got about a week before I ended up getting off trail. I was actually getting up to six, seven miles a day then. And then COVID happened. And I, to this day, I wish I went to Dallas trail, but everything happened for a reason. And, but after COVID happened, I, all I did was walk and walk and walk and walk and walk until my feet were so sore I couldn't walk. And I kept doing that day after day after day. My buddy took me down to Springer. I did, we got there at three o'clock in the evening. I did three miles to three forks. Next day, I went from three forks to Justice Creek, about, almost 11 miles. And we got to Neil Gap in three and a half days. It's just, I was determined to make, make it happen. And, I was going good as could be until my prosthetic broke, and then it dropped me down to about eight, eight, eight and a half miles a day. So I just kept doing eight, eight and a half all year, and I got to where I was going. Yeah, you just <laughs> cut it into a few, a little bit smaller bites, but yeah, but you still kept working at it. Yeah. And was there was there any right. I mean, after your experience, I know you love winter hiking and backpacking and all of that. Mm -hmm. But was there any second thought going back mm -hmm. out there? Not until I had to cross the creek for the first time. And it was nothing but like snow and ice. It took me probably about 15 minutes to convince myself it'd be okay to get your boat across it. Once I did it, I was fine. Like, I don't, I don't really, like, dwell on the past. I just use it to make myself better. And in this case, just try to get other people to live down what happened to me for them not to let that happen to them. It really ain't just me out there trying to prove that you can do anything you set your mind to. I'm also trying to get people to understand it just takes one little switch mm -hmm. out there and your whole life, your whole life can completely get torn upside down. Like I knew what I was doing. I had the gear to handle what I was doing. I just took one slip and something happened. Yeah. You just got to be careful. Yeah. And especially in wintertime, the risk is like escalated big time. Oh yeah, the margin of error is much much smaller. Exactly. You fall in a creek or something in the summertime, it's probably gonna feel pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you fall in the winter time, you gotta gotta get stuff stuff together pretty quick. Has it changed the way you do your winter hiking? Yeah, I I carry a spot now. Okay. I used to never. Half time, I never even took my cell phone with me before. And I was one of them people that when they get out to get away from everything. But, uh, the biggest thing for me that's changed since this and winter, I have to carry a whole lot more stuff. A side effect from frostbite is you're extremely sensitive to cold. Like my feet, my hands, my nose, my ears, all, any extremity I have will just freeze in 50 degree weather. Really? So I have, so I have to carry more, more clothing and warmer soup stuff than what most people would. So that's the biggest change. So the frostbite, even though the amputation was your feet and your legs up to kind of your knees were in the water because you were exposed for so long, because you were outside for so long. 
-hmm. your entire body is affected by it or would that have been regardless? That's regardless. Okay. I, I'm assuming. Crosswalk is side effects that it affects people different ways. Some people have what they call phantom pain where they feel stuff that ain't there. I did for a little while and then it just went away. But and then some people just get those sensations there. Other people are like me, really sensitive to cold and it just affects people differently. And unfortunately, me, it gave me that side effect whenever I'm out there all the time, like so. Yeah. I know that I people who are starting early on the AT obviously run into the cold. Oh, yeah. On the PCT and the CDT, because of the seasons, because of the mountains, mm -hmm. they're people are and the rivers they're going yeah. to run into the cold issues yep. what, would you, like, what would you tell people to like do? the air and ones and so on just watch every step whenever it's cold and you're in like a kind of sketchy situation take more precautions than you ever normally would like yeah, like I'm proof stuff, stuff can happen even you take your mind off of what you're doing for one minute. And just don't go underprepared for the weight for the sake of saving a little bit of weight. Yeah, I that's that's a big one for through hikers. Oh yeah. I'm ultra light and everything too, but wintertime completely different story. Mm -hmm. Do you bring extra food with you now? Yeah, I always bring an extra day of food. Okay. Well, I don't bring a full day, but I, I bring like an extra dinner and an extra snack or two, just in case I'm a day behind or something happens, I still got something for that extra day. How was that feeling of getting back on the AT? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, so, so awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's one day I don't think I'll ever forget. Just seeing that sign that said Appalachian Trail. Yeah, that was, um, I worked can to describe what was going through my head at that moment. It was just, it was amazing. When you got out there and you started hiking and then you were doing it day after day, mm -hmm. Is that where sort of the expanded uh, hiking plans for the day came in? Mm -hmm. Like just, like in the beginning with, I was just going like every weekend when somebody could take me. And then I just got to where I just didn't want to go home. I wanted to just keep going and going. And that's what I did. And then as soon as, July got here when I get, went down to Springer. I wasn't planning on coming home until I got to wherever I was planning on getting to. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's sort of like that. Um, um, not coming home till I get where I'm going. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, like I went from uh, Irwin to Damascus. I got back. I was going to go home, and I was like, "No, nah, take me to Springer." Then I went from Springer to that Irwin. Then they took me back to Parisburg, and I just kept going. How far did you get the first time you were on from, trail? From uh, like in uh, February and March. Uh, no. Uh, before before. Uh, like sixteen hundred miles. You had gotten 1,500 miles. 1,500. Like I got, went from Maine to that. Okay. And. Yeah. So. And, uh, I guess I was a little unclear I, because you were bouncing around a lot this year. Did you uh, finish the rest the of it? Technically, yeah, I have. But I'm wanting to do this trail and every other trail as an amputee. 
right you want to you want to complete uh, it that's my goal is to like all seven national scenic trails like i am now and i'm going to use other trails like i am next year just to fill in the time and just i got a list of like 50 different trails i want to complete 50 like the next. five zero yeah <laughs> Okay. Between shorter and long. And I'm going to try to knock out three or four of them each year. Like the longer trails, I'll try to three ride them. If I don't, it'll be a two year hike like this one is. But like anything under a thousand miles, I know I can through hike. Yeah. And my, and I got some big plans for the years after. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. If you've got 50 trails yeah. to get through, oh, you, yeah. your years in the basically, future are covered. Basically, because I love winter hiking, every mm -hmm. year, somewhere between January and March, I'm going to do some shorter trail to get ready for my big hike in the spring and summer. And then once I get done with it, I'll do another like winter trail. Kind of like no. how I'm doing in the fall, kind of basically. Like, yeah. Okay. Kind of like how I'm doing next year. I'm doing the Foothills Trail to get my legs going again for when I get up to PA. And then I'm just knocking out two other trails or going to attempt to after the 18th. And the long trail is just because if I'm going all the way up there doing that first half of it, there's only 160 some miles left. Why not just go ahead and knock it out if I got time to before it's 10 foot of snow. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can handle snowshoes and everything this season. That would be interesting, yeah. I would try it. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to, you'll have to test it yeah. and, and see what, I guess you'd need, you'd need poles though, because the poles are what help you balance, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have a, depends on the terrain. Some of it, I can't do it if I ain't got my poles. The rock scrambling like up stuff, I can fly right up it. It's like the really rocky defense that like has like, I call it the dump truck gravel, that they just dump and you step on it and it slides and stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, I have to have, really have my poles in. Or I'll like just fall over. <laughs> that would not be pretty. No, but but I wonder. I failed twice this year. That's pretty that incredible. Yep, yeah. only two times. One time was pretty good though. <laughs> Do tell. I uh, was paying attention to a view, and I was kind of like on a little knife edge right before I dropped into uh, uh, Harper Ferry. My shoe was untied, and I didn't realize it. I tripped and my foot come out of my prosthetic and then slammed on the rock. Ooh. Yeah, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that hurt. I just sit there for about 10 minutes, rubbed my foot out, and then I hopped back up and walked four more miles to camp. What was it like walking into Harper's Ferry at that point? It was pretty, it was pretty awesome. Like, I had actually got... Because then begin with, I was just planning on just going to Harper's Ferry. Mm -hmm. I was going so good. I was like, I can go ahead and knock out Maryland at least. And that's what I did. But, yeah, even with the, the way the ATC did everything this year, about three hikers, I still didn't want to pass up a chance to get a picture there. So yeah. my friends actually lives in Boonesboro, Maryland. She come down and took my picture there for me and all that. And then it's her and her friend took me back to their house and went in the trail magic and everything. Then I took me back and then I finished up my. But hitting Harper's Ferry is, is emotion. Like, cause so, yeah. I, so many times, like, Like I had it's on my YouTube thing. I had like twenty twenty through hike or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I had so many people telling me in the beginning with like 
you won't make it. You can't. You don't go far enough to make it. Blah 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 blah. Well, I come to face to face with it a long time ago. I'm not going to do it too hard. I just turned it into a two year session hunt. I guarantee you, one of these years, I am going through hard. But Do you, to, me, to me, it's not about the through hiker recognition or whatever. I just want to hike every step of the trail. So, is that the at this point? Is that the long term goal? Is to be able to. Within a season or within, um, within a 12 month period. 12 month like period, I, perfect. George. Like when I do the PCT, I'm planning to actually try to do it all at once. But I want to get to where I can do at least 15 miles a day before I even attempt it for the CDT. Fif- you said 15, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to go at least 15 a day before I set. But don't need any more there. How, because <laughs> there's river crossings, because there's a lot of snow, like, mm-hmm. are you thinking of Sobo or are you thinking of hopping around so that you can hit them during prime I season? I haven't really put much thought in it yet. Like, I'm, I'm planning on giving myself two more years to get up to the best shape and the mileage I can. Mm-hmm. And the PCT, it should be 2023. Sweet. That's my end goal. Like next year, I want to do, hopefully, well, not next year, but you know my plans for next year. Next year, I want to do the Arizona Trail and the Colorado Trail. And then hopefully, the next year, do the PCT. That's my big have, point. <laughs> you're going to have all of these people following you on, on uh, pins and needles. Where is Chris? Where is Chris? <laughs> it's kind of hard to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you're an inspiration. I got some of the, some of the best followers. So, I mean, it's kind of crazy, but it's awesome, man. It's so intense. I just love. Like, I get messages. The best part about what I do mm-hmm. is just all the messages I get from people saying how I help them in one way or another. Like, being an inspiration to them or they were in a similar situation since their life was completely over. And seeing my story and how I push to get to where I am now made them change their mind and now they're out doing whatever yeah like if you have if you have a dream in the life in life don't just dream about it make it a reality and that's my motto like i say that all the time and it has such a deep meaning for me because the reason i say don't just dream is because you never know what's going to happen like you could not be able to do it the next year or the next year or the next year. You have a dream or you want to accomplish something in life. Put other stuff on hold if you can and go for it. It's sort of like what you're what you're doing with the PCT and the CDT. Like you'll you know what you need to get up to. You know where you need to be in order to tackle those. And so yeah. that's your focus. The AT is a lot different than into. You got a town, a way to get into a town every 10, 15 miles. Yeah. In most cases. Now up north, it's a little bit different, but especially from Georgia to where I was, something happened. I could get off trail anytime I want to. A little bit different out there. A little bit. And that's, that's, that's a little bit easier hiking. For the most part, but it's a lot further in between stuff. Yeah. Now I've heard on the AT, as you get further north, there's some boulders or 
yeah. it's not Roxylvania. It's like bigger. It's scrambling over that kind of stuff. Yeah, I shouldn't have any problem with that. Sweet. Like I've went up Mount Albert. It's like that. Mm -hmm. Mount Albert is like a mansion version of the White Pennaway. Okay. And I flew right up it, and then uh, um, Fire Skull Knob, I had no problem with. All the places everybody kept saying I would have a hard time with was the places I actually had no problem with. The only, thing that really, the only thing that really gives me a hard time now is like the steep, steep down here mm -hmm. that lasts more than like two miles. Just because your your feet get tired or your your body gets tired? No, it's just like my foot is right there. Okay. When I go downhill, it's constantly doing this number. Yeah. I tape them and everything, but the tape only keeps them from not getting sore so long. Yeah. Like it, if it's a short downhill, I can run right down it. Literally? And, yeah, literally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if it's not, if it's not real, like really, really steep, I can just run right down it. People just fight with me, like looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm just <laughs> like rock hopping and jumping all down through there. But if it's a real long downhill, say like the three, where it was five miles of nothing but down, 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 and pretty steep down, yeah, it's, I had a hard time with that. And I ended up, that was my day. I just went up the creek and down it, and I called it a day. At like one o'clock in the evening, because I knew if I kept going, I probably wouldn't be able to walk the next day. Has this mm -hmm. sort of not necessarily taught you, but but brought you to a space of moderation or a space of being okay with, you know, stopping it's, at one p.m. and saying, "I'm done. I'm done for the day." It took me a while. Say again. Like, it took me a little while. Like there, about halfway through Virginia, I can't. Meeting people at shelters and stuff, and then I'd never see them again, and so on, and so on, and mm -hmm. so on. And it was getting so frustrating that, like, I can't keep up with, I don't, can't hike with anybody because everybody goes further to me. Or everybody's going to town, I can't get there, I only can go, furthest I can, closest I can get to, it's like five miles out of town. I can't just go that extra five miles to get there. And it was playing a big toll on me. Like, I'll, I've always said a through hike or a long hike or anything is 90% mental, 5% gear, 5% physical. The mental will take you off trail before anything. Mm -hmm. And I was getting, never thought about getting off trail, but me, if I, I decided, like, if I just wasn't having any fun anymore, I'd get off. Well, one day I realized I was getting like that. I took a zero at the shelter. It had a really pretty creek and everything. I was like, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get my head straight. Well, later on that evening, the sobo that I follow on Instagram, she stopped there and came me and we talked. And she I told her what was going on in my head, and then she caught me in, like, just not to care about what, like, other people is doing. Go as far as I can go and be happy I got that far. What, and, did, what did she tell huh? you? That, that just, just not to let my pace get, get to me. Just be happy that I'm going however far I have to get to me. Like, if I go eight miles that day, be happy I went them eight miles. If I go five miles the next day, be happy I got that far. And started thinking like that, it changed it a little bit. Now it don't really bother me so much. But I do want to get my mileage up, too, just so I can actually not have to carry so much food and everything mm -hmm. else. 
I guess you get you get the other side of the benefit, meaning that you are constantly meeting new people. You are constantly inspiring new people with with your journey, essentially. Yep, pretty much. Because <laughs> everybody everybody ends up catching up with me eventually. Yeah. Did you have you met people on trail who? know you or follow you yeah quite a few and pretty awesome because like, <laughs> i was going nobo when most people was going sobo i ran into so many people that was following me and they would be coming around the corner hey you're mister i was like yeah what's up <laughs> and it was it was so cool like i never i'm just a guy out there to just didn't give up and just wants to get something done with his life. And what I want done in my life is to hike as much as I possibly can. And it just blows my mind like how big like it's gotten in a way, like just how many people have heard my story and how many people actually know who I am and it's it's crazy because I'm just a little little kid or a little guy that just they out in the middle of nowhere. When, <laughs> when did you start to realize the effect that you had or could have for people who are facing difficulties? When I made that video, I had a lot of people ask me what, I had so many people keep asking me what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened. So I made that video to just, tell the whole entire story, every single detail from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. The comments I got on that, that thing, you can type in a hiker's worst what nightmare on YouTube. That's the very first video that pops up. Out of everybody. There's so many videos out there named that. And it's only got, it's got like 400 and some likes and only one dislike. And it's been watched. It's got eighty percent watch time on it. Wow! The twenty-four minute video. So that means they watched at least twenty minutes of it. Yeah. And just the comments I've gotten on that, thanking me for sharing that and how it helped them in that way, it just it blew my mind. And that's when I actually started pushing, trying to get my I story out as much as I could. Not because I wanted to get like celebrity or whatever, anything like that. I just want my story to touch as many people as possible. You also on Instagram have talked about your struggles with depression and yeah. and that and, and how being on the trail obviously helps with that the trail is my happy place i hardly ever have a bad day on trail and when i have a bad day on trail it's better than any day in this world this world but yeah i've always had like depression issues and so on and then it just got 10 million times worse when this happened because it's like a roller coaster I said, I lost everything. And I'm a lot better than what I was, but like getting off trail now, I kind of dealing with like the post trail and stuff because I was out there, didn't do a through hike, but I was out there long enough just like a through hike would be. Yeah. And it's still hard. Like I just, that's all I'm thinking about is wanting to get back out there and out there and out there. And that's why I'm jumping on the Foothills Trail here pretty soon. And I'm doing, actually doing like a mini through hike next week going on the Iron Mountain Trail. It used to be that old, used to be the AT a long time ago. Okay. But 52 miles goes through, uh, Virginia, then into the Masters, and then ends in Shady Valley, Tennessee. I'm starting it next week. It's, Cause I got, I got to get, I got to get out. <laughs> you got to walk. 
yeah up going up and down the road and that rail the trail we got it just it ain't, <laughs> it. <laughs> it ain't cutting it huh uh, and the the best way to train for a hike is to hike I've i got heard that plans. i got big plans so that's what i need to be doing is hiking as much as i can have you taken out your uh, your new prosthetics for a little uh, road testing test test drive, so to speak? Yeah, just up and down the road and through the woods okay. and like I'm where I live. There ain't really any like trails. To get to the AT, I got about an hour drive the other way, and where that happened, I haven't learned how to work the pedals yet. So I can't drive, and it's kind of hard to get there sometimes. Yeah, that would I, make it. So I got a way to get get somewhere this weekend. And that's where I'm pretty much is. Anytime I have a way to get to a trail, that's where I go. Is that basically the way that you kind of work with slash through your depression is get back to the trail, get back to nature as much as possible? Yeah. Whenever I'm just at home or whatever, that's when, like, all the thoughts you have about how, why this happened, why this do that, and so on and so on. When you're out there, you don't have the care in the world except for where you're going to sleep, where you're getting your water, and where you're getting your next week stuff. Nothing else matters and it's just my mind is in its best place when I'm out there it's all about is the sort of the simplicity of it yeah. help yeah. I mean it's the simplest but the yet the best the life can be in my opinion yeah Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm kind of looking at my. Oh, I know what it was. When you started this year with the AT, you were really looking at it in in a very small chunk, and then yeah, you started. I was looking at it twenty miles thirty. Okay. That's exactly how I was looking at it, and then. Whenever COVID hit, and then when I come back, I start looking at it in the. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going, I want to get as much done as I can. And I right. still think if I wouldn't have got off trail, I could have probably finished it this year. The way I got, because once I got going good, mm-hmm. like I could have been to Harper's Ferry a long time before then. Right. But, I regret getting off trail, but I don't regret it because I wouldn't have met all the amazing people I did doing it the way I did it. Isn't that always the the struggle? Is you want to be it? You want it to be something different, but if it was something different, then you wouldn't have had this experience. Exactly. It's like a win. <laughs> win, win lose. You don't. You just have to decide which one. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, oh, go for it. I was going to say, and, and speaking of, of somebody you met, ran into, I guess, this year, um, you also came across Fresh Grounds. Yeah. During your hikes. Yeah. I met him, uh, in Daleville and that, and Hulk, Greg Main, he was there. And then he told me Fresh Round was coming. I was getting ready to head out. He told me Fresh Round was coming to meet him. And I was like, well, heck, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the whole year, I've been hoping and hoping and hoping and hoping to meet him. I didn't get to, he didn't get to feed me, though. He, he had just got into town. But he told me if I turned around and started going the other way, he'd feed me all the way. <laughs> but maybe I'll see him next year. Yeah, I mean, because basically, now you, now you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you can start tracking where where it is. Yeah. What what other kind of trail magic did you see out there? 
So we got that hostels, and then I went to pay. Somebody had already paid for it. Nice. That happened numerous, numerous times. And the, one of the biggest ones was Laughing Heart Hostel. They knew about me before I even got there. And that stretch from Hot Springs to Irwin is a pretty long one. It's like 80 miles. Well, they slap packed me for three days. They the night there, and I only paid for like one night. That was pretty insane. And they're like, so they're just a really awesome people. And then, like, I had people coming out and meeting me all through the stand over. Like, it was crazy. Like, just the amount, of, like I was saying, just like people showing up. Just the random act of kindness to a complete stranger is just it's awesome. Talking about random acts of kindness, because I feel like in our world today, right now, it sometimes seems like it's in short supply. But then you get out there and you're on the trail and you're hiking and and it seems yeah. in great supply. It seems that way. But being out there just like like in March whenever I was still on trail when everybody was like the COVID thing split the hiking community into two. Yeah. They had the people that was behind the people hiking and the people just was going crazy about it. Like when I was in Marion going back to trail, I had 10, like eight people tell me I need to go home and stop killing people and all kinds of stuff. And then after all that happened, a little while later in July, it was just like the community just came back together and it just kind of restored your, like just being out there restored your faith in humanity. Like yeah. just the, the little things that people do for each other. And, and the craziest thing about being on a long trail is every, you become friends with the unlikeliest people. Cause you all have you like you become friends with somebody you would never probably even talk to out, like in the real world you all had that common goal and that's what everybody pulls off of and it's just really cool it's it's <laughs> sort of like everybody forgets their real world i think out there is the real world this is, <laughs> this is what we're forced to be at <laughs> You're forced to exist until you can get back to the real world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you had one of your posts on Instagram was really funny to me. It was when you were in Georgia and you did an animal count. Mm -hmm. And you were like, I saw this mini bear. And do you remember what yeah. those that count was? Not exactly. But I remember I was keeping up with all of them there for a while. But I know just from Neil's Gap to Black Gap, there at the North Carolina border, mm -hmm. I've seen 48 bears. And that's only like 20 some miles. So, that Wait a second. Crazy. Say that again. How many bears? 48 bears. That's what I thought you said. Neil Gap, Neil Gap to Black Gap there at the North Carolina border. So you want to see a bear on the AT, go to Georgia in July. <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly where to head mm -hmm. well and you yeah. also had seen uh rattlesnakes galore yep. yep actually about i came about that close to stepping on one one time it was curled up on the step and i was videoing my feet going down i didn't see him until he popped up on the screen and my foot was like <laughs> Not far from him, and I just fell backwards. Scared the crap out of me. Oh yeah, how yeah. how would that <laughs> work? <laughs> oh. I don't know, but it was it was scary. I thought I was done. Got bit. Yeah. Like he 
curled up, rattling and everything. Was he and rattling I, at that point? Yeah, after whenever I fell backwards, that's whenever he started rattling. Oh, yeah. Yep. Well, and you were also saying that you saw some, some copperheads out there? I seen copperheads, rattlesnakes, bears, and I swear I seen a mountain lion too in Georgia. That was that was scary. Yeah. Like I it's actually on video somewhere. So I thought it was it's right at dark and like that twilight where you can barely you can see but you can't see. Mm-hmm. And just heard one right there next to the trail. I hollered and it took off yelling and all kinds of stuff going up the hill. That was, that was crazy. <laughs> George is a, a wilder place than I thought. <laughs> George is pretty cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Georgia was actually one of my favorite states so far. So much that I actually want to do the Bent Mackay just because it goes to another part of Georgia. What What was so attractive for you about Georgia? I'm not sure. I just... Um, Maybe it's because, like, how far I'd already gone before I'd actually went down to Springer. But it just, it just seemed really easy to me. And you got, and I kept getting so many, like, I had perfect weather all the way through Georgia. So every view you could see during the middle of summer, I got. And I think that's one reason why I liked it so much. Like, I got views every single day. And I didn't get rained on all day long for days and days and days. That didn't happen until I got to Tennessee. <laughs> From Hampton all the way to Damascus, it rained every single day. Oh. Yeah, that's a... <laughs> That's just nasty. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> When you step on the trail now, what are what are your thoughts? What are what are the thoughts in your head? Just like I'm coming home, or like I'm back where I'm meant to be. That's how I look at it. Like I can have so much. I could be having the worst day ever. As soon as I step out the car, put a pack on, and touch that trail, it just it goes away. And I'm, I just get happy. I'm laughing and I'm just having a really good time. And so, like I said, it's hard for me to have a bad day out there. Like we, we, you can see on like my videos, it could be pouring down rain all day long. Yeah. I'm just sitting there laughing about it. Cause I'm just, no matter the weather, I'm just happy to be able to be out there. When you have something dramatic happen to you, it makes the stuff you do do in life mean a whole lot more to you. Yeah. Amen. And for me, it's just being able to take one foot in front of the other on whatever trail I happen to be on. And that's just where I'm the happiest I can be. You can have anybody that's ever seen me on trail. They tell you the exact same thing. <laughs> the trail is where <laughs> you are meant to be. Yep, I think so. If you were to tell, though it's not generally or usually an issue on the AT, but on other trails on the PCT and and CDT and and so forth. Mm-hmm. What would you tell people who are feeling like they got are or are getting frostbite or um, that they have a danger of it? What would I tell people? Yeah. <sighs> don't wait or don't wait around getting it checked, that's for sure. That's one thing that because what it is with me is just where it was so long to get help, it just kept going further and further. And if you do get frostbite, 
Do not try to warm it back up. You want to keep it, you want to keep, if you already had the frostbite, you want to keep it cold because if it thaws out and then it refreezes, it just gets worse and worse and worse mm -hmm. every time it does so. When you let, when you want it, when you let it thaw out, you gotta be able to keep it thawed out. Okay. That's the biggest thing. Cause, you know, you don't want it to thaw then refreeze and then thaw again and so on. It's just, I think that's kind of sort of what happened to me. Yeah. And, and then it ended up getting the worst kind you can possibly get. And I've got to assume that once it's freeze frozen, yeah. it's easier to refreeze. Like if it were to warm up, it's probably easier also than to refreeze. I would think so. Like, I'm not an expert on it, but yeah. I know that's the one thing. If you do get it, you got to be 100% sure if you get it thawed out to where it don't spread anymore, you got to be able to keep it thawed. Yeah. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should? Mm. Mm -hmm. We <laughs> talked about a lot of stuff. <laughs> Is there anything you want to know that you haven't asked? Um, let me think. Well, while I'm thinking about this, where can people find you? Where can people follow your continuing adventures and also about your prior adventures? Um, I'm on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. All mischief underscore on the trail. Perfect. And just for everybody who is listening or watching the video where you tell the story specifically is frostbite the hiker's worst nightmare okay perfect perfect yeah. 24 minute video of me just talking but it it's... goes to every single detail from the moment i slipped in the creek until i took my first step on the trail yeah. I I watched it. Oh, you did? Yeah. I I I have to tell you, I had my heart my heart was in my throat. I'm just listening to it going, What huh? what next? Oh no. That Please. was so, that was like the hardest video I've ever yeah. made. Now I don't know if you noticed they got cut so many times because I started like I couldn't talk. I was getting choked up. Yeah. But it was worth it. That was the bad thing about it. I had to relive the whole entire thing to be able to do it. And that was tough. Yeah. But thank you for sharing it. Oh, yeah. It's an incredible story, but it's yeah. also an important story. Yeah. For many different reasons. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And if anybody has anything going wrong in their life and thinking like you can't do something or you wish you could do something or just something's making you think that you can't watch that video i guarantee you it might change your mind yeah and and watch any of your videos of of <laughs> the at hiking through hiking section hiking what what do you consider Consider it, is it? I'm doing kind of like a lash, I guess it's uh, just two really long sets and hot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but literally watch any of those and see what can be accomplished. Oh no. But yeah, I'm doing like a trail. Sorry, yeah. say that one more time. You froze for a second. Oh, I said I'm doing like a long section hike of the AT next year, but I'm actually through hiking three other trails on top of it. Just you know, go for go for the small things. <laughs> uh, now, yeah, you heard my big plan there. I hadn't yeah. told I hadn't told anybody about what what my end goal was. So and that that was my plan to begin with was just 
to go do it and I still want to do it. But mm-hmm. you gotta be ready for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I could go, I could go out there and try it now, but I want to be able to do it in one year. I don't want to end up splitting it in two years. So I wanted to get my feet and prospects the best I can. And it's just that's the way my my right foot is. There's only so many ways you can have like a prosthetic for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be awesome if I could find something that just would make me feel like I'm floating on air. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't have like all the rubbing and the bending and yeah. Like first thing for me, on a, like if I step on a rock and it's right here. Uh-huh. And I step on another one here, they'll bend that up and they'll pinch the heck out of my foot. That's like the, that's the worst part about these. I have to, with my right foot where it's only, I have to make sure where I step is underneath my actual foot. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. No, it I get, 100% does. If I could get something that eliminated that problem, I would be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> You can be thinking forward for the for the prosthetic makers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Had, yeah. Did anybody <laughs> ever say to you, like, when you got the surgery or when you had the surgery, that you should have done it a different way? Like, did they ever question how you did the surgery or how the surgery was done? Other doctors have. Like they was saying with my right foot, they should have cut it up here somewhere. That way it had been more ways you could, like, prosthetic wise. Right. Because my, the problem with my right foot, like, you know how your arch is naturally lower on the outside of your foot and it's mm-hmm. raised in the middle. Yeah. It's cut right there at that arch to my foot. Sits like this, Ooh. and all that weight goes over to that corner. Like if I put my foot down level, it's up about that far, mm-hmm. like a I don't know a quarter or eight of an inch, something like that. But it makes all the weight go to that point. That's what the insert in my shoe kind of pulled it with me. Right, because it then the shoe up to me. Well, and also then I would think that because you don't have the ball of your foot there, your arch never lowers or, or stretches, yeah, I don't, so to speak. I basically don't have an arch. Yeah. I don't have the ligament that goes through to make your toes and your mu- your muscles work. I don't have the pad that protects your feet. I have it, a little bit of it left on my left foot. But... Hard to ex- explain how it is with that foot there. No, like I. Just, that, that's one reason why I only can go the mileage I go. Like, I can go 10, like 10 or 11 miles mm-hmm. right now. But I can go further than that, but if I want to not, not hard, that's how far I can go. But my, my thing is, I can go about a mile and a half, two mile an hour. Okay. That every hour I have to stop and take my shoes off and rub my foot out. Cause it just gets sore like in, uh, um, just like in the shoes for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where I guess where I have to have it so tight to keep my foot from popping out. Yeah. It's. Cause that hurts when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, listening to you to talk about it it's it's kind of sad because your your inspiration your your work to get where you are and being able to do everything that you want to do you know Mm -hmm. with it on the trail and I think about what my thought process was in terms of because I wanted to I was supposed to be on the PCT this year hmm. or 2020 and yeah. 
Yeah, I, I guess it, talking with you reminds me that I need to I need to adjust my thought process. I need to adjust my attitude about what I can do and how I get there, so to speak. Because I, I know Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know I'm I know I'm still going back. I know the the picture of the PCT is still hanging on my wall. It's not going away <laughs> until I finish the damn thing. <laughs> ah, there we are. There you are. We froze for a second. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah. one last question for you. Okay. What was one of your favorite moments on trail once you got going? Once you knew that once you got back in July and you knew that you were gonna be able to to do the longer thing? The happiest moment was when I crossed the Georgia North Carolina border, because I had walked 300 miles and I hadn't finished a single state yet. Because <laughs> it was all from the middle of Virginia to somewhere in the, ten in the Tennessee. So whenever I did that 70 whatever miles into North Carolina, I was the happiest person in the world. <laughs> I had finally finished the bag on state. <laughs> it was your California. Yeah, it was like I done walk this far to get here. <laughs> Cause that was, it took me four hundred miles to cross one state. Yeah. So that was my happiest moment. And the other happiest moment that probably compared right up there with it was in the Ron Highlands. I was I actually skipped Rome whenever I was doing the hike because it's really, really bad thunderstorms and it's crazy, crazy, crazy. Everybody was saying not go up there. Mm -hmm. So I went on and went to Damascus that next weekend after I got to Damascus, I went back and did that. Fourth of July weekend. Got all the Rome's was amazing, but come down a little hunt and stop down there at this little camp spot until the sun started going down. Went up Big Hunt or Hunt Mountain, the most amazing sunset over to my left. Fireworks and everything going off on the other side. And it was like the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I started crying. I got emotional. It was, that was one moment I don't think I'll ever forget. It's just, that was just amazing. <laughs> is it carved into your into your brain oh yeah yep that picture that's on for my instagram person mm -hmm. or profile picture that's actually that sunset that was, taken right, that was right in the middle of a uh, little hump and big hump or a little hump and hump now. Mm -hmm. how are the ponies uh the ponies are awesome like I live not too far from Grayson Highland. Yeah. Thank you so much for I, coming on. No problem at all. Thanks for having me on. Really enjoy talking with you. This has been so much fun. <laughs> and and inspirational and a little course correcting on on my internal monologue. Yeah. It was definitely fun, that's for sure. And you said you head out next week? Tomorrow. Tomorrow literally tomorrow. Yep. So I captured you at the last possible second. Well, I was gonna to go today. But then <laughs> so I canceled it and for a day and now I'm yeah, I'm leaving at about eight o'clock in the morning. Okay. Well, have fun. Both the snow, so I should get some pretty awesome pictures. Speak a, little loud. a special thanks to Chris for sharing his stories from the trail and Maya Wynn for the use of the song Try Again. On next week's episode, I'll be talking with Morningstar and Cookie Monster, known off trail as Andre and Leanne DJL, about their new book, Six Months with Three Pair of Undies. 
about their 2015 through hike of the Pacific Crest Trail. I hope that this conversation, these conversations, inspire you to get out there and have a few hiker trash moments of your own. I'll see you on the trail. When we fall.